Yes, people, as you've already pointed out, it's Joe's day. It's not my day, it's not your day. It's Joe's day. Welcome, in case you don't know what we're talking about. Here we are, down in the bottom of my garden, in my posh shed. And uh, We've been streaming shows for whoever is interested in this is number 24, believe it or not. And the reason this day is a little bit different is that it's Joseph's birthday. And we are a team of three. You might only ever see me. You nearly saw Joe today. It was like that. I was going to give him away, but no. But there's Sally, who's the, uh, the management, the brains behind it all. And she's there taking emails if you can't get through on the chat and uh, making sure that you guys are kept well informed. And as Joe, who really just makes it happen with his technical expertise, his computer knowledge and uh, wizardry. And it's his birthday, he's 17 years old today, which is really hard to believe, but it's true. So as you're pointing out, it's Joe's day. Fantastic. I'll play a tune. And once again, I've been raiding the vaults and uh, here is one from the Missing You CD, which came out not that long ago. And it's called The Year of the Snake. Mm. Thank <laughs> you. 
the ear of the snake. And it really is, I've, I've said it before, I know, but I'm going back to the vaults to dig out these tunes I haven't played for years. Because of playing so many gigs in this setting, so many evenings, and uh, I'm really happy to repeat myself, but not all the time. So every single show I want new stuff to play for you. And uh, man, I haven't played that one for at least five years. And I'm not because I don't like it. Somehow, there are so many tunes and so little time normally. And you travel with a regular troupe of players. So we change the set around, but not every night like I'm doing here. So it really is like meeting up again with new friends. Uh, the Year of the Snake. Enjoyed that. And I hope you did. Doesn't really matter whether I enjoy it. I've heard him before. Just hope you, you enjoyed him. So... Massive thank you to all of you for the donations, as you often do, but this time extra and above, and people are saying, right, I'm giving you this money, but it's all got to go to Joe. <laughs> and believe we've been sending him cards and writing him poems. Oh, he's living the dream, but just for a day. And uh, a couple of outstanding ones, Celia Wood, she sent beer for all of us, but especially for Joe, and it came from the Isle of Skye. And one of them is porridge flavoured. Yes. I read the back of the bottle. I couldn't believe it. Porridge oats. <laughs> I was so happy. No broccoli though. And, uh, oh yeah, and a non-Joe thank you, uh, Mr. Clive Eccles of this parish. Thank you very much, mate. Doesn't even know me and he lent me a van, which got me out of jail that day. I had a mercy dash to do involving an essential move. And uh, thank you, mate, for your listening. And uh, well, what else was it? There's um, <coughs> uh, the Simmons, local friends from our village. They sometimes watch in as well, Chris, Helen, and Dom. And then they brought a card and uh, a gift for Joe. But the card really tickled me so much because, uh, you know, here we are in the studio and its, um, it's official title is Hey on G which means, it's Japanese, it means the Temple of Peace and Calm, which it often is. And it, it's kind of colloquially, oh, that's a hard word, isn't it? Especially after you've had a beer with Smithy to get you started for the weekend. It's uh, affectionately <laughs> known as the Snake Bit, but uh, this card was addressed to the Zen Den crew, the Den of Zen. I love that, that's great. To the Zen Den crew, here's your rider, it said. I do like that. That's going to stick. And, uh, yeah. Please give 100% of this money to Joe. Thank you, Yak. Mr. Nicholas K. Oh, and Midge and John and Joan. <laughs> He's so generous, you guys. Uh, while I've still got the tenor sax round my neck, this one called uh, Dean Street, the Dean Street Blues.
The Dean Street Blues. I felt I was gulping the air in then. I mean, playing on your own, you don't get those little breaks to have a good breath of air and a drink of water while somebody else takes the solo. <laughs> Panting like a puppy dog. I can get rid of this now. So, I hope you guys have had a good week. We have. Some of you will have been working. Some of you will have been isolating furiously. There still never seems to be enough time, doesn't there? What's been happening here? I would have bit of banter with that uh, blackbird that I did the duet with last Sunday. Some of you were here for that, I know. And... Uh, Still playing that same sort of tune. <laughs> Chases me around the garden. Not the bird, the actual bird, but the, the melody. Reminded me of Joe, you know, thinking about him and the years that have gone by as as one does on a birthday. When he was, when he was quite young, there's um we've got a, got a decent pond in our village and it um has uh, ducks on it year round. And he kind of learnt to do the the duck call. But he got it so good that they would come to him. I think he's lost that now. That was a cute memory. And I was thinking about that with, with me and the blackbird. Should feature a duet for um, Joe and the ducks. I'll work on that. Work in progress. Our postman dressed up today, dressed as a, a whoopee cushion. It was a, a bit of a surprise and made us smile. That was good. And I had another first this week. I arranged um, You'll Never Walk Alone for saxophone and tuba. My main man, Jacob Smith, lives a couple of hundred yards down the highway, high street, that highway, that way. And uh, that was nice. Worked good. Worked he played good. And... Uh, I think it brought a few people extra out for clapping for the, the heroic folks who we worship and always will do. And uh, But we had a rehearsal by video call, which was a first for me. And uh, to be honest, it was nothing to do with uh, physical distancing because I could have actually just walked down there and I could have been outside the house with the window open, which would have been safe, wouldn't it? But it was chucking down with rain, so <laughs> the video call seemed to be the better option, and it worked fine. I was impressed. So uh, maybe I'll never have to go anywhere ever again. I had this, I get this twitch in on a weekend about first of all late morning or mid morning. Oh, I should be on the road. I should be getting on the road. I should be packing the car with the PA if I need one and all the kit and the microphones and the, all the making sure I've got all the instruments and the CDs that you guys can buy in the interval or at the end. You have to go to the website now instead of the little table. Mm. Um, and then I realise I haven't got to go anywhere. And then I have another little twitch about mid-afternoon. Oh, it's time for sound check, which it kind of is, but it's just me down here. And then sometimes it still flashes up in your diary. And you, go, so you go, oh, I'm supposed to be in Ivy Bridge. Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah. 
mine flashed up today. Pack for Granada. So I got rid of that one because it's making me sad. <laughs> we do a lovely thing with um, a small handful of saxes, a small handful of trumpets, me and my mate Johnny Thurkle. And uh, down in um, his wonderful mansion just outside Granada in southern Spain. And we would have been doing it for a couple of weeks, but now we're not doing it until maybe later in the year. Uh, what have I got for you? I've got the flute out. It doesn't come out that often. And it's a piece of music called Breathing. <sighs> Even that word makes me want to breathe deeper. Which is... They're sort of raiding the vaults again. This one is, oh man, it's 20 years old. Off an album called Snake Bites that I made with um, Will Mowat, a good friend of mine, a North Londoner. And uh, we had such fun making that, that album and made it in Kilburn mostly and a little bit in his house in Maida Vale. And uh, it really was a joyous experience, as making music should be and usually is, but not always. And, uh, but it was truly joyous, and particularly this this track is a musician by the name of Shinda. I don't know his full name. He's um, a tabla player from the Midlands, and he's a big boy in the Bangra scene. And I'd played on a couple of his tracks, so we reciprocated. And I got that word out, and he came and played on on this track, and, and one other one. But it was a really lovely day, you know. When you're making an album and some a musician comes in who has never played on any of your tracks and you've never played live with, it's quite an, it's pretty nerve-wracking and it can go either way, obviously, but usually goes the right way and it certainly did that day. Was, and you just sit in the control room with a big cheesy grin on your face. You know. You'll hear the tablets are re they're really loud in this mix. Um, tune called Breathing... Thank you. 
breathing. Oh. My old friend breathing, written with Will Mummett. He's isolating in the Alps. It's all right, isn't it? He kind of withdrew from the music business and uh, got a proper job as a translator. He's a, he's bilingual. I think he was. I think he's Swiss deep down. Yeah. And he's he's trilingual. I think German and French and English. And he's always done a bit of translating. And at some point he thought, I've had enough of the music business, and uh, got a proper job doing his translating all the time, which you can kind of do from the Alps. You can sort of do it from anywhere. You don't have to get in the van or anything like that. What else has been happening? Oh, how about you guys? Never mind about us, what you're saying. Evening all. I like that. Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I don't play the flute that often, but um, I played it before the sax, and uh, I still practice it a lot, and it comes out just every now and again. What happened was I sort of fell in love with the the oriental woodwinds, the shakuhachi and the bansurai that I play more often these days, that feature on my new album, which I'm just not mentioning enough, which is available from the website. <laughs> But I still do love the metal flute, and it's kind of what it was my first wind instrument. It got me, got the whole thing going. And ah, uh, oh, Duncan is saying, "Happy birthday, Joe!" All the online members of the Snake Pit. Oh, great! You're saying hi to each other. A group of rattlesnakes is called a rumber up. <laughs> a rumber of rattlesnakes. It's quite hard to say. A rumber of rattlesnakes. Hmm. I like that. A rumble of rattlesnakes in the Zen Den. Oh. Yeah, something off snake strings, Glenn. I have it in mind. I've got the, I've got the list of possibilities and the list of requests, and sometimes they meet in the middle, and and that is one request that's cropped up a few times and that's a nice and general something from the snake strings project which myself and the string quartet and i do have those master tapes somewhere and i have it in mind that i'm definitely going to revisit them and see if i can pull some it together and it's not going to be tonight in fact it's not going to be this weekend but um yeah snake blows sally sows Techie Joe stays in control. Birthday boy is boss. Thank you, Sea Washer. And that's about the level of it, except Sally does more than so. She's been baking this week for the birthday boy. And sometimes there are, you know, off cuts or rejects, but no, nothing. So we're having birthday cake after the show, and that'll be my first taste of what I've been smelling for. 48 hours and then she's been making masks sewing fabric masks because there's still not enough PPE out there so I think the latest batch are going to a Driffield Medical Centre they should be there by now I posted them um, and a group of ladybirds is called a loveliness oh, yeah, I had heard that <laughs> that's so beautiful isn't it or somebody's plugging the CD doing my job for me the new CD is fabulous we really enjoyed it. So relaxing. Yeah, you can be my publicist, L Leslie. Thank you very much. Uh, Johnny Boy up in Scotland. Yes. Not a bad place to isolate, I imagine, either. Mind you, we're happy isolating here, and I hope you are wherever you are. Hey, Joe, I hope you're reading these chats. He got so many happy birthdays, but he nearly showed his face and gave you a wave. It was that close. He does exist, honestly. Look, we had the party poppers earlier. <laughs> I'm just proving it's true. 
Right then, I've been really, really... Uh, oh, there is a snake called a horned viper. Rather apt. A horned viper. I've got to remember that. Remind me of that horned viper. I have heard that as well, but not for years. And that's a track title, isn't it? Or an album title. The horned viper, we could say. We could, we could get a bit oldie English and call it the horned. The horned viper. But I'm not poisonous. I'm a non-poisonous snake. Right, the part of the show that I've been looking forward to more than any other part. And I really hope it goes great. And I really hope she's there. Um, one of the various lineups that, that I have, or that I'm part of, I should say, is called... Well, we're not sure what it's called. It was called Burden of Paradise, and then it was called... Burden of Paradise 3, and then it was called Bop 3, with a 3, and then the word 3, and then it went back to be Burden of, being Burden of Paradise 3. And what's in a name? So we, we're the band that doesn't know what we're called, I think. Um, and it's myself and my buddy Dave Bowie Jr., who gets mentioned every now and again for feeding me mouldy bread and things. And my super-duper friend, Helen Watson. Under normal circumstances, Helen would be here in person. She's the most delightful house guest, may I tell you. And uh, But it's not possible at the moment, is it? It's not allowed. And uh, So she's going to be with, be with me virtually if we've set it up right and if we can get her into the computer. And uh, so I did pre-advertise the fact that Helen was going to join me. And it was kind of like the Great Bake Off, right at three minutes to seven. The chief staff haiku writer, Val Schultz, steamed in with his Helen haiku. So here it is. Helen softly sings, gentle harmonies breeze in, snake blowing the wind. Yes, mate, you're keeping your job, you're keeping your crown as... Chief haiku writer. I think I think there were another couple of yours later on. If I I have these notes, but they're all over the place, and sometimes I find the things I'm looking for, and sometimes I don't. Anyway, what do I need for this? I need a tenor sax. And now I need to see. If her ladyship is available. Oh, snake, very clearly daytime for me, but hey. um, we're time travelling here, aren't we? We are. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Oh, 
was the only thing that matters at all. After all, mm, after all, I'm gonna blow. Thank you, Helen. Oh, I've got the tingles. Absolutely marvellous. We must do more, Helen, if you're listening. Oh, great. And we, honestly, it's the most sociable of bands and we have such fun when we're out on the road. And oh, It's just glorious, like it should be. Really, really brilliant. And... Uh, most of you know Helen. If there's anybody that doesn't, you know, find out more about her, obviously you can type Helen Watson into Google. At the moment, she's been busy with um, some girlfriends. They call themselves Daphne's Flight, who you've probably heard of as well. And just yesterday or the day before, Helen played me her new song, which is featuring on that album, and they've been doing virtual videos for it. So it's up there on YouTube. And the simplest way, if you just type in Daphne's, with a PH, Daphne's, and turn the microphones off. I'm going to say that again. Daphne's, and turn the microphones off. And it's a cute song. And she's in fine voice. So check that out. And to see a bit of BOP3, also on YouTube, as is everything, if you just type in, I think the my favourites at the moment are some footage from Shrewsbury Folk Festival that I did. So if you typed in BOP, BOP, three, it's a figure, Shrewsbury, that would, you'd find some stuff there, I'm sure. BOP, three, Shrewsbury. Yeah, get the BOP experience. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, we've got to do more, Helen. We've got to do more. Yeah. What is coming up? And say hi to the Smiths down the road. Hi to Steve and Lewis and Nikki and Andrea and Ginny and Daryl and Mandy and Tilly and oh, anybody else who knows us who's out there. What are you saying? Turn the microphones off, Daphne's flight. Um, oh, yeah, nearly saw us in Loftus, but it was cancelled right. 
before lockdown, but as it was as it, as we were building up to being locked up, um, it was all going horrible, wasn't it? And people were saying, "Don't travel and don't mingle and everything." So we had four bop gigs that week, I think three or four, and they got cancelled, obviously. And we were so sad, but we'll rise again, and I'm sure Loftus will have an- another chance to have us in their fine town hall. Clea says that. Helen says, yes. I say, great. Uh, I was going to play a bit of jazz for you. This is where I lose half the audience. But, you know, it's nice jazz with melodies and everything. And I'm not going to go bonkers because I don't really do that. And, uh, oh, Chris and Helen Bird. (sighs) We kind of reunited. And, uh, and it was Hazel's birthday too. Great to see you guys too. Um, so D- D- Duncan, the aforementioned, who mentioned the Horned Viper, we send each other stuff. He's a sax mad dentist or a dental mad saxophonist. I'm not sure which. Um, I think there's more money in dentistry than saxophony. Not that, hey, we don't money. Money's a thing of the past, isn't it? Um, all donations go to Joe tonight, by the way. Uh, so he's, we send each other stuff, you know, things to think about, things to read, things to listen to. And he sent me a link to a wonderful solo by a tenor player called Sal Nastico. And uh, I can't remember the name of the band. It was one of those steaming big bands. And uh, I was in the kitchen at the time and it came up on the laptop and I, I played it and it was absolutely brilliant. And um, Sally was in the, in the kitchen also, and she's not right. She's not right keen on jazz, and uh, she says, um, "Where's the tune then?" And then she said, "Sounds like a bunch of people in the same room, but on separate mobile mobile phone calls." A bit harsh. And then I think her next. Oh, well, actually, I know. I wrote them down. Her next comment was, um, "Not exactly a toe tapper, is it? When's it going to finish?" I'm thinking. That's so disrespectful. Old Sal Nastico, man. He was in fine flying form. So I wanted to do one by Rogers and Hammerstein. And uh, as often, when I'm playing a song what has words, even I, wanna, I don't want to sing it. I don't, it's a bit hard for me. I want to play it on the alto sax. But I often have the lyrics in front of me, as I think I've mentioned to you guys before. It's much more helpful to me than having the the dots of written music. So I was going to read you a couple of lines because it's such beautiful writing. Then I thought, well, it's only short. I might read it all uh, unless I get tongue-tied. And then I'll play it and then perhaps you'll see what I mean by it because I'm kind of playing the words if it it goes all right. And uh, such brilliant lyricism. I'm as restless... As a willow, oh, it's called. It might as well be spring. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I'm starry-eyed and vaguely discontented, like a nightingale without a song to sing. Oh, why should I have spring fever when it isn't even spring? I keep wishing I was someone else walking down a strange new street and hearing words that I've never heard from a girl I've yet to meet. I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams. I'm as giggly as a baby on a swing. I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud or a robin on the wing. But I feel so gay in a melancholy way that it might as well be spring. It might as well be be spring. Thank you. 
came on me. I had a sudden fit of night in Tunisia. It's a tune written by the great Dizzy Gillespie and before that it might as well be spring Rogers and Hammerstein. Ah. And uh, oh, you know it's Joe's birthday. I got a gift this week a few days ago once again from my man Duncan and it was um, you know when you get a gadget or you know, something which you immediately realised that you needed, but you didn't know you needed it. So I'm going to show it to you. Actually, it's, it's probably so geeky and boring for 99% of you, but it's, um, it's a mouthpiece holder carved out of oak. Look at that. To me, it's a thing of beauty and usefulness. Although it has made me realise that I've got too many mouthpieces. You only really need one and a spare for each instrument, each saxophone, but you can't help but tinker. <sighs> right. There must be a couple of haikus lurking here, I'm sure. Yes. And uh, it's kind of... Birthday haikus are begging to be written because happy birthday Joe is five syllables. And... Uh, 17 today is also five because the haiku if you are once again if you're new to the snaky stream and you're new to haikus they go five seven five but you don't have to stick 
rigidly to that. Even the great Basho, my favourite haiku poet, well, he's, he's my favourite poet at the moment, full stop, end of, but uh, definitely my favourite in the world of haikuism. He was a little bit relaxed with the precise form now and then, so you don't need to absolutely stick to it. A bit like me and cricket, says Baz. It's an acquired taste style. Oh, you're talking about jazz, aren't you, amongst yourselves? There's no more jazz tonight, okay, I promise. So, yeah, but generally we go 5, 7, 5. Um, so what have we got? I wrote in one. I didn't want to be left out. And uh, I kept revising it because uh, you guys kept nicking my lines. So I changed it slightly. So here it goes. 17 years old. Much investment on the way. Worth it in the end. And you are, Joe. You are worth it, mate. You're a good good boy. Especially these last few weeks, man. You are so worth it. Now, who have we got next? Julie Thompson. This is her first haiku ever. Here we go. Lost in the music. The rhythms flow through your mind. Sultry saxophony. What an end line that is. Sultry saxophony. Wishing Joe a happy birthday. Julie Thompson. Thank you. That's great. And uh, this one from Annie Lane. Happy birthday, Joe. Concealed snake pit magician. 17 today. So she got those two lines in and then a beautiful middle line. Concealed snake pit magician. And then she did one for Sally. Oh, no, no, this is for all. No, this is Sally and Joe. Sally uploading. Tech whiz kid young Joe. Grey hair essential. Now, that dates back to a, quite a few shows ago when poor old, he was only 16 at the time, came downstairs one morning and said, I can't grey hair. We find him a birthday card with two hairs on, a brown one and a grey one. <laughs> and the brown one was saying, oh, a grey hair. I'm not sure if he, I think he appreciated it. And uh, another one from is from Barbara Webb. This one came steaming in about 6.30, but well before Val Schultz's. Happy birthday, Joe. Technical wizard and more. A great snaky show. Because <sighs> the, the challenge was thrown out by Duncan that they should be kind of snake-themed. Oh, somebody wants more jazz. A few people want more jazz. Mainstream and swing yeah, that's Christian and Pat, isn't it? And you had some great suggestions there, which are on my list, a bit of Coleman Hawkins and uh, somebody else. Shadow of Your Smile, that was one, wasn't it? <laughs> Johnny hates jazz. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough, Andrew. That is fair enough. Uh-oh, people are already laughing at my mouthpiece holder, Simon Goulding. Whatever turns you on. Now, John, is he's got it right. Very handy and well made. It's an acquired taste, this jazz. A bit like porridge and broccoli. Ah, oh dear. What else have we got? I think that's it. I think that's the birthday haikus all done. And thank you so much for your generosity and being so, so nice to Joe. Um, so one more i got one more tune for you, and then um, we're off to play some party games, of course. I have some jelly, broccoli-flavoured jelly, and um, pin the tail on the newt. Uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I'll end with another tune from uh, uh, the Snake Bites CD. And this one is whatever you want it to be. And if you, if you jazz fans, you, you could call it, I hate this label if you could call it smooth jazz but it's actually quite a poppy tune i think you know you could you could put words to it i sort of did once smooth jazz northern or so would be great yeah 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 now that's the kind of comment i like from you helen love all your music snake yeah <laughs> jazz is like the offside ruling football the players understand it 
So what? I played that little bit of jazz and none of you understood it. Nah. It's just all melody, isn't it? It's all melody and bit of rhythm and groove and let's not call it anything. Let's call this one You're the One. This is for you, Joe. You're a good boy. You're the one. You're the one. And you're the one. And you're the one. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. With us. What a lovely evening. And uh, it's a lot of fun. You're good people. And I know that you're being kind to each other. You're taking care of each other. You're respecting those people that are looking after us. 
and uh, you're being patient and understanding. You're dealing with it. Thank you so much, Helen. That was absolutely brilliant. Having you virtually down in the Zen Den. Thank you, Sally. Ooh, cake coming up. Cake and beer just go well. <laughs> Anything goes with beer. Pin the tail on the newt. Thank you, Joe. Happy birthday. Should we all should we, should we have a little quick happy birthday for Joe? And and anybody else who's got a birthday coming up or just been or just about to be unable to celebrate it quite how they'd like to. Now here's your note. <laughs> Follow me. Being great, guys. I must remember, or Joe will kill me. Subscribe, like, give me thumbs up. Apparently, that's good. And spread the word. You can get in touch with us via the website offline. Uh, have a look in the shop and all that kind of thing. It's been lovely being with you. And take care. And oh, it's only Friday. The weekend has started, so we could do it all again. See what's on the telly. You know, weigh it up. But I'll be here from 7 to 8 tomorrow. And then again on Sunday. Sunday's much more chilled and relaxed and we'll get the, the floaty wood, wooden things out. Uh, oh, purple rain. Uh, oh, you're chatting amongst yourselves again. Lots of happy birthdays. Yeah, purple rain, I enjoyed that. We should do that again sometime. 17. <laughs> so, you guys take care. And uh, maybe see you tomorrow. Maybe see you Sunday. Sax players, see you at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. You know it makes sense. You guys take care.